Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple surprisingly released iOS 15.7 RC or release candidate. This is available to developers and probably public beta testers or public very soon as this is something that's probably the last version of iOS 15. And you can see it came in at a very large 5.4 gigabytes on the iPhone 13 pro. Now, in order to install this, you need the iOS 15 beta profile, not iOS 16. Otherwise you won't be able to see it. Now this released alongside iOS 16 RC that released right after the iPhone 14 event, along with watch OS nine RC TV OS 16 RC, and then other versions of iOS 15.7. So iPad OS 15.7 RC, and then Mac OS 12.6 RC. So all of those released surprisingly today. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings and then we'll go to general, then about, you can see the build number is 19 H one, two, and this particular build probably will be the last major update for iOS 15 as Apple typically discontinues it, but then supports older devices such as the iPhone six S six S plus seven, seven plus, and those devices that were discontinued with iOS 16 support. And so in this particular update, there is no modem update coming from iOS 15.6.1 on the 13 pro it's version 1.70.01. And that's really no change at all. They didn't even update the version on iOS 16 betas either. Now you may have already seen the Apple event where they introduced the iPhone 14, 14 plus iPhone 14 pro and iPhone 14 pro max. And they introduced some really neat features. If you like this new display with the cutout. So this new cutout, they have a name for, and you can see it says dynamic Island. Now I showed this in the iOS 16 RC video also, and I didn't think it'd be controversial, but quite a few people either love it or they don't. I like it quite a bit. And if you have a pro display, you'll be able to have this. Also, one thing to note is the iPhone 14 pro and pro max also have an always on display. Now that's only available on those devices. Unfortunately, it won't be making its way to the 13 pro or pro max due to a new display. Also, before we talk about new features, iOS 16 is releasing to the public on the 12th. So on well, next Monday, it should be out to the public and you can install it if you want to do that. Now, as far as new features in this particular update, well, this is mostly for compatibility with the new AirPods pro Two. So Apple showed those off the AirPods pro themselves don't look too different than what we have with the current AirPods pro. But if we go to Apple's website again, and we check out the AirPods pro, they have an all new version. So AirPods give it just a moment and you'll see AirPods pro second generation. They didn't call them AirPods pro two, and you'll see, you can order them starting on nine, nine, and they'll be available on nine 23. So they add some new features and this update of iOS 15.7 adds compatibility within the code itself is new images and everything else. So the images that you just saw when I connected the AirPods pro, those images have been updated to match the new case that we get with AirPods pro two, where it has a speaker, a little lanyard attachment, and and allows you to use find my with it. So that's something that will be all new. And it will also even charge with your Apple watch charger, not just a regular Qi charger or MagSafe. So that's something that's new with the AirPods, but either way, this adds compatibility with it within the code is mostly just changes for that. No other major features are introduced. Additionally, as far as Apple's notes, they didn't provide any feedback app with new notes in them. And on Apple's website, that's available to the public for the notes. There's nothing new there either. So we don't know if they've patched any specific issues or if there's anything fixed whatsoever, there's no notes from Apple at all, which unfortunately isn't very helpful. In fact, if we take a look at what they said with the install, it just says this update provides important security updates and is recommended for all users. So it's going to patch some issues and that's probably about it. It will have bug fixes, security updates, and that's it. Other than that, I wouldn't expect it to patch anything else. Any additional bugs hopefully will be fixed, but we won't know until it's released. And I wouldn't expect any additional notes other than what I showed you in photos there just a moment ago from the screenshot. As far as when to expect the iOS 15.7 public release, well, we could expect it as soon as either a couple days from now or next week at some point. We don't know specifics as far as that goes. And then also we're seeing updates with iOS 16.1. We haven't seen a new beta for that. And we're waiting for the beta for the regular iPhones to get that as well. Apple last year released it the day after they released iOS 15. So 15.1 betas went out after they released iOS 15. I would expect a similar sort of role out this time around.
And so if you're wondering if you should install iOS 15.7, well, if you have a device that supports iOS 16, I would probably just skip it at this point as iOS 16 is going to have all of those new features with the lock screen and more. However, if you want to stay on iOS 15, you definitely could try it out and then see what it's like. As far as overall battery life, well, it's way too early to know for sure. So in settings, of course, we can take a look at this one. It, this is not my main device and battery health on this device is 100%. However, it will take a few days to measure what battery life is like. However, initial performance on these devices seems to be fine. ProMotion is nice and smooth, scrolling through apps, going into apps such as music, playing music, we'll give it a second to load. Everything seems to be really nice and smooth with 15.7, and it should be if it's the last version. As far as overheating or anything, the phone is getting a little bit warm as it just installed a major update, but I would expect that to cool down a bit over a little bit of time. As I've been showing it to you, I do feel a little bit of warmth here, but again, it's a huge update and it needs to process a bunch of things in the background and it hasn't been that long. As far as overall benchmarks, I did run those so we could take a look at that. If we go into Geekbench, you can see the scores here. It scored 1,739 for single core, 4,742 for multi-core. Pretty good scores considering this was just installed and it's processing in the background. So that's good. Hopefully we'll get long life and performance out of this. Hopefully we see no battery changes or anything like that. And it keeps its peak performance capability long and keeps the phone running nice and fast. I know a lot of people are concerned about phones being slowed down with updates, I really wouldn't worry about that too much. And so this probably will be the last major update to iOS 15. And now we're moving on to iOS 16. I'd love to hear from you if you're going to stay on iOS 15.7 or iOS 15 versions, or if you're moving to iOS 16. Also, if you're picking up a new iPhone, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, as well as maybe an Apple watch or the new AirPods Pro 2. Definitely I'm waiting to pick up the AirPods Pro 2 myself. I want to try them out, see what it's all about as far as the overall quality. They should be better, so I'm looking forward to that. But let me know what you're looking forward to, and of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, this is from the iPhone 14. I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.